Welcome to episode five of the Pixel Wankers. Four? Let's cut the episode. Okay. Because <laughs> we're, we're so mixed up right now. <laughs> Welcome to Pixel Wankers. I'm Tim. I'm Mitch. Scott. And Steve. And today we're talking about, well, I know Steve wants to talk about uh, the Warcraft teaser trailer. The trailer of the trailer. Thank you for saying that right. Yeah, thank you. Is that what it's <laughs> they're billing it as? You know what I hate? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Let's let him. Let's let him. No, let's no I, I'm great totally. Sub. I'm <laughs> totally fine. You know what I hate? <laughs> I, I think you should go with that. What do you think? All right. Hate? So, 99% of the time, and this is like the exception because I'm such a big Warcraft fan, um, I hate trailers for trailers. Uh huh. But, I mean, this movie's been done, I believe, since like last year. Like, I think like around June ish of last year is when they really like stopped having to push. Uh huh. And, Initially, it was going to come out uh, in December of 2015, and they were like, oh, dude, Star Wars is coming out, so let's not do it. And then they pushed it back to, like, like March, and they were like, this movie is way too good to be a March movie, so we need to push it back even farther. So then they push it back to June, so it's got, like, this nice big release date. <laughs> release in December, then. If you think it's a good movie, just release in December. Yeah. Fuck we'd... Star Wars. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> the reaction that just came out of that I know <laughs> Steve's face is like <laughs> <laughs> but I hate tra- our teasers for trailers like yeah, yeah. it's so stupid mm-hmm. that being said when I saw online today that there was a teaser for the trailer I like shit my pants I watched it at least five times in a row I think Tim could see over my yeah. shoulder I was just like this is fucking incredible. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. And there's not much. I mean, there's not Oh, much. no. It's like a guy jumps off of a thing, lands on a bird, and flies away, right? And then, like... Oh, did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my friend's like, oh, hey, I can't wait for Friday. I'm like, what's on Friday? And he's like, they released a, star- uh, War- a World of Warcraft trailer, uh, yeah. but it's like a pre-trailer for 15 seconds. And I'm like, okay, show it. And he turned on. I didn't even see any audio. He just turned on the video. And it's just like, dun, 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 jumps off the thing. And like, I'm like... Okay, that's cool. Like, I want to see the rest of it. It looks super supreme, like, like awesome animation. <laughs> but it's not a trailer. It's, yeah. it's just yeah, it's a guy not, jumping it's off. Yeah. Of the other thing is, like, Ant Man did it as well. I think they had a sort of a preview, the preview, of the tra- teaser for the trailer, and sure. it's just yeah. Well, think about Star Wars, man. Star they Wars say man. that we got three trailers. Bullshit. We yeah. got one trailer. Yeah, yeah. Like those other two things, those are teasers. They were pieced like, out. Yeah. The the, <laughs> the first Star Wars trailer was just sort of. A glimpse and a fade, a glimpse and a fade, yeah. a glimpse and a fade, and yeah. then Star Wars, and it was yeah. like, oh, okay, well, you know. I knew as much now as I knew before. Yeah, so there's wonderful. probably about as much, like, footage comparable to the Warcraft teaser, except for they actually build it for what it was. It's like, it's funny, you know what's, like, really jacked up, though, is, like, because the very first shot you get is this dude jumping off the ledge, and he lands on, like, a griffin, but it kind of looks like an eagle. And well, what all, is it? And I thought it was what bullshit at first. I was like, <laughs> this isn't a trailer. This is just Hobbit footage. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw some orcs, and I was like, oh, it's a fucking trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does cut to some cool fighting scenes. I'm not yeah. not downgrading it. They're, like I said, it looks primo. And it looks fun. I want to see the re- a, a full trailer to actually understand what's happening in the movie. Sure. But from the little cuts, I mean, like, looks like fun CG. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to launch Friday with, uh, with, like, the opening ceremony of BlizzCon, which, like, the opening ceremony, I guess, was free. But thinking about that, I was thinking about how, like, Blizzard is, like, one of the only studios... It, I think it is the only studio that has, like... like their a, own con? Or, yeah, like yeah. a full con of their own. Doesn't like Disney have some sort of con? D23 now, yeah, but D23. Disney's... Yeah. That's not, like, a small No, it's thing, not right? like BlizzCon either, though. Like, yeah. You know. yeah. But, I mean, how impressive is that, that Blizzard can have its own con, and it sells out, like, in, in a few days? Like, it's fucking awesome. Like, and so I was thinking we should talk about who our favorite developers are. Because mine is is easily Blizzard. Mm-hmm. I just, for one, they're so art focused. Yeah. All their stuff looks like incredible. It just gives me like a nerd boner like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then like just what they've been able to achieve. But is, Mitch does that to you too, so. But um, that's different, man. <laughs> <laughs> he photoshops pictures of his face with my girlfriend's. Oh my god, hair. that was like the funniest thing in the world. Last <laughs> night at ten o'clock, we're sitting in the studio. 
And we've been wanting to fuck with your pictures for a while. <laughs> it was it was so perfect. The lighting was amazing. I, yeah. I was I was seriously surprised you saw it as quick as you did. I mean, I stared at that the rest of the night like, oh my god. We're, we're letting the audience in on this like total like inside joke. We, yeah. Like, we need, to, we need to post the picture or yeah. something. I don't know if you would be allowed, but so I've got a picture of my girlfriend Andrea on my desk, and I guess that's like kind of old timey to do. Old timey Steve. <laughs> well, Jessica or Jess walks in the other day and she's like, "That's so cute. Who even does that?" But it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up your pants and put on your suspenders. And yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I like my girlfriend's face. I want to see her. I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse is that after a full day of working, I didn't take your face out of the frame. Yeah. <laughs> no, we actually figured that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so back to, to <laughs> the developer idea that yeah. you had. So I would say that Blizzard is by far the strongest developer. Yeah. Um, I saw like a, a poll, and it was like the, the top three. And this is actually going to take a little bit of strength away from my argument. Um, Blizzard was uh, number three. The first two are Working for Yourself and Valve. So those are the only two who beat it. Hmm. And man, Blizzard is just sick. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Because it's your favorite developer, mm-hmm. are you a fan of every one of their games in their franchise? The only ones I haven't played, I haven't played Hearthstone, mm-hmm. and partially because I know like I'm just gonna get hooked. Like you can play it wherever you go, because I, I believe it's just like on your phone. Mm-hmm. And I haven't played Starcraft, which like I'm meaning to fix, but like Diablo, like I absolutely love the oh. War, like Warcraft three years of my I've life. Played. Yeah. Diablo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love those. And then I mean, I was a World of Warcraft. Addict for a while. You're still, not. Still? I still kind of am. Like, you are. You you blew up like all my on you're the Pokemon thing. You're like now. They have both. They have that in, in World of Warcraft. Check yeah. out World of Warcraft. <laughs> World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. <laughs> Just no, saying it as many I, times I don't as I think can. you're not. You're seriously. You've moved to being a fiend because you don't play it as much as you used to because you know mm-hmm. that you're just going to be so addicted the moment you turn it on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you do turn it on, you disappear for a week. Yeah. And yeah, because I had it last week. Life. I had yeah. it last week, and it was funny because like. Uh, a GM gave me like free game time and <laughs> I was like telling Andrea on Sunday night I was like oh I'm not gonna be able to log on and like I realized it's not even like the gameplay so much that I'm in love with it's it's the world they built like because I was running around to places that I've been and just like looking around and like looking at the art direction the way they design stuff and it's stuff I've seen like a thousand times sure and I'm just like I just love this world like mm-hmm. when the game's free to play and it's empty and nobody's there I guarantee you I'm going to be logging on just because there's something about that place that to me huh. is like it, it's the, the greatest feeling I've ever gotten from a it's game. It's just turned into Dark Ages of Camelot. It's free and people 14 years later are still <laughs> logging in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in, I Hi, mean, Dan. Can, <laughs> so they, they released their numbers for World of Warcraft yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's a decade in and they've still got 5.5 million. Yeah. And, and that's like, they're like, oh man, this game's not doing so hot. It's yeah, like, they're in a lull, and that's like a monthly revenue of $5.5 million. How much is it a month? It's like it's $15 a month. Holy crap. Yeah. $15 a month for the game. That's the thing that I can never get in on these online multiplayer games and things. Like, I like the idea of playing with everyone online, online and stuff, but honestly, I didn't play World of Warcraft for a while until my friend bought it. And he was like, hey, can I borrow your computer at home to like play World of Warcraft on? I'm like, Go for it, but I'm gonna play it too. Uh, but like, uh, I I I couldn't get it. I can like see myself spending 15 bucks a month on a game like yeah. that. And honestly, the game I like the feel of it, but at the time it was pretty low poly too. Like oh, it's still it's, it's still not it's still not the greatest looking game. It has like a lot of the the geometry and like the silhouettes of like the structures and the land and stuff is really clever and really uh, fun to walk through and stuff. But when you are you walk into like a house and there's like a tiled textured floor that's like as big as two characters, it's like, whoa, yeah, I can see, see, I can see the pixelation there. Like this is like a 72 DPI yeah, yeah. image across this whole floor. Like, <laughs> ugh. You can see the pattern repeat. Like, yeah. It's like, oh my God. There's, there's, some, yeah. there's some pretty rough spots on that yeah. game. Well, and lie. all the new stuff though, they have like these really cool brushes um, I was watching like the making of and stuff, but the brush is like you can paint just like a little bit of snow and it will fall in between like like cracks like 
I, I, I like I don't know how the technology works, but man, like when you see him painting it, it's like, damn, that looks cool. Cause like you don't yeah, because the there's like some programmer like ripped ripped his hair out before someone did that. <laughs> now we're gonna demo it. Oh, look at <laughs> well, how the snow the falls. Is, I want to paint snow. <laughs> you can only see oh, like God. the old mountains where they just like stretch the shit. Yeah. and it just looks awful <laughs> on the yeah. side of the yeah, wall. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Didn't yeah, it go through a like a visual update. I was reading that they were gonna like update the poly count, update all the textures. I that's, don't know if it did happen or not. But no, that's on that's like on the character models. Like everything that comes out gets better, but I mean for them to go back and redo like just like original Azeroth, that's mm -hmm. like a massive undertaking. They should. They happening. should just literally scrap the whole thing and relaunch, you know, World of Warcraft two and just update the all the stuff. Because no. I can't see myself honestly playing the game. You know what? When did it come out? Early two thousands, two thousand, late two thousand four, early two thousand five, or so. sometime in two thousand five, because it's a decade old now. Yeah, so, so. I played like two thousand six, two thousand five, and I was like, these graphics don't look fantastic for then, and yeah. now, yeah, they're they a little rough. Okay. It's like it's like they're, playing a Superman uh, okay. N sixty four game. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm right there with you, Scott. Fifteen dollars a month for a game that isn't new, and you. You've played it to death, like yeah. it's a bit pricey. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I'm one to talk. I'm just about to go drop sixty dollars on Fallout Four, but <laughs> it's a one-time, it's a one-time thing. Yeah, like I know I'm gonna get like five hundred hours worth of gameplay from it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like, I can understand why that's it, it's cheap for people to play because it's like, oh, it's only fifteen dollars a month, and this is the only thing I'll be playing this month. Yeah, know? like, yeah. but for me, I kind of like it. Well, mix everything. Like, I kind of yeah. honestly you know, like. I can see myself, so there's the whole debate between like Xbox versus PlayStation. PlayStation like gives away their online stuff, and X, or do they still do that? Or am so I they started now? charging. Uh, they started yeah, charging so now. PlayStation Plus gives you free games every month, but okay. so does Xbox Live Gold now. Yeah. yeah, it's not as much. They only do two games a month on Xbox Live. So I feel like it would be cool if Blizzard could somehow like license with them to be like, yeah, you can play World of Warcraft. And also get a bunch of like stuff on your your Xbox or PlayStation. Like I know they wouldn't do that because they're always making tons of money, and they're like, why yeah. do we need? Why do we even care about console guys at all? But I just feel like for fifteen dollars a month just to play that one game kind of stinks. With Xbox and PlayStation, at least they're fifteen dollars a month. They're giving you all online mm -hmm. games. Well, back in the all day, online, you know, part service. of the reason the fifteen dollars like made some sense, and it doesn't so much anymore. Is they would release like a good amount of content mm -hmm. after like an expansion launch. Like sure. you would actually be getting stuff for your money. And now they're trying to push out like expansions like within a year, and they're they're not hitting their goal yet. But I mean, I think there's like there's gonna be three like mm -hmm. large patches of content, and a lot of the content for World of Warcraft like wasn't really worth it with with Warlords. Like I like the newest expansion, but like there wasn't enough content for me to justify like. Yeah, I'm gonna keep paying fifteen dollars, and that's mostly why I'm in a hiatus right now. Is because there's no content coming out, mm -hmm. and I'm spending just a bunch of time doing nothing. And like, don't get me wrong, like I love the world, but if I'm gonna spend, you know, like, I mean, how many months is it gonna be before like the the next content? You know, like we'll just yeah. say like another ninety dollars before anything new comes out. That's ninety dollars that I'm not getting anything for, and, mm -hmm. it, and it doesn't make sense. So I think that that business model within the next two years. If not down. sooner, it's gonna be. It's gonna change. It's gonna change because it has to. Do you think they will change? Because so, like you said, they they have like five million subscribers still. Blizzard's smart, man, and they will find a way to make things work. I, like I, I don't know what they'll do. Like, but but Blizzard really is. They're kind of like the Steve Jobs. Like they <laughs> see the way somebody else is doing something, and they're like, "Damn, that's smart. We're gonna make it better." And then they they come and release that, and they just make it way better. Like yeah. no MMO has been as good as as World of Warcraft. Well, like, correct me because again, I haven't really had too much experience with it but a lot of MMOs kind of switched over to being free after mm -hmm. a few years of being out you know yeah. and I think World of Warcraft is free up until a certain level level 20 that's like too but fast. it gives you a bit of a <laughs> yeah. taster for things yeah. to come how fast yeah. can you get to level 20 if you're like cruising you can do it in like a couple hours right uh, an hour probably really yeah. so it's, a, it's like a demo basically yeah yeah it really is and I mean, you get it like a little, like you what's, said, a little taste. What's the top level right now? Uh, well, it's one hundred. It's one hundred. Yeah. Was it was it well, always one hundred? Because I thought you get one point. I thought sixty was first. and then seventy and then eighty and then eighty-five, then ninety and now one hundred. Okay. So, 
Um, mm. And then, sorry, my last mm. argument for Blizzard being the greatest developer, <laughs> and this goes back to uh, like World of Warcraft stuff and being out for a decade. Um, for people who actually played for that entire decade, had that subscription fee that we're kind of griping about, nobody knew that it was coming. They just get a package from Blizzard one day, and they've got a statue of an orc riding a frost wolf, and it's a and that's their thank you. You know what I mean? Like, not too many publishers. Thanks for uh, spending yeah. thousands of dollars over these years. Here's a cheap uh, ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to so downgrade the itch. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, and, and they do stuff like that mm. for people who work for them too. Like, I think it's like five years you get like, like a sword. Uh, Ten years you get a helmet, and then twenty years or something like that you get like a shield. And those could be mixed or matched. But like, these are badass looking things, you know. And yeah. it's mm-hmm. like, how many like? It's kind like, of a cool thank you yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 All right, I'll rest it. So my developers, <laughs> anybody else? My uh, developer, uh, well, so I not super fond of like I don't know. This is gonna be the best and the worst at the same time. <laughs> it's rare because nineteen ninety, you know, to ninety eight, Scott it. is like rare. You know, rare, rare and, and Nintendo are <laughs> are up there. They're like some of my the yeah. best times. Sure. You know. And and Rare just did like a lot of good stuff in the '90s, you know. What I mean, mm-hmm. even even a little earlier when they were on like there's some NES stuff that they did that was okay. Um, but I mean, like Donkey Kong Country, like all the stuff on the N64 um, was awesome. They were like hitting their stride, and then they had to you know make the deal with the devil and go with Microsoft and ruin everything. And like so, the best developer and the worst developer, because like right now, I I don't want any. Name a rare game right now. Yeah. But then it just came out. I don't know. I mean, like, I that Banjo Kazooie <laughs> racing shit that came out was Recently? awful. Well, I don't know. That was like, or that, that was, was a very, while ago. If, you, if you're talking about the latest release, it's That's Rare impressive. Replay. Rare which Replay. Which is the $30 for 30 games. Yeah, so we're going to sell you all the good games that we came out with. Mm-hmm. And, Remember and, when we were good that one time? <laughs> but a new <laughs> release from them is pretty rare. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, on the, on the Rare uh, game pack, did they miss... Uh, Goldeneye, because my brother was saying that he, he he didn't think that was in the pack. I don't know. Which I was recently replaying Goldeneye. Still a fun, normal, awesome oh, game. Yeah. I, I like, like it. Shit. I like it. Shit. No, I, I liked it because like I mean like yeah, it's pretty <laughs> rough. It's oh. it, you know shooting wise, <laughs> pretty rough. You you just you just point and click and it's like okay, but it was like the it was the very infancy of like shooting games. Like that was like the first yeah. real oh, shooting game. I fully agree with you. It's cool. funny to say that because on All Hallows Eve, we were playing Goldeneye at Tim's house. Oh, you yeah. did? You yeah. guys did? Uh-huh. So, <laughs> we experienced it firsthand. And we... and it's surprising how much you miss ridicules, jumps, crouch, like yeah. that kind of stuff, you know. Well, Another analog stick because we were doing it on the N64. You know? Okay, so what was the consensus with you guys, real quick, of what your thoughts? I love time splitters, so I didn't have too much trouble. Okay, and Tim? Um, I didn't play that night because I was too busy. Thank you, whoever was hacking on Grand Theft Auto Five and gave me all that money. I appreciate <laughs> it. So I was busy on the computer while these guys were playing Goldeneye. Steve. But yeah. Oh man, I I loved it when I played it back in the day. But man, that plays like a donkey's ass now. Well, <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Okay, I, I agree with you. Ass. Controls like they have all the, they have all these configurations of controls, and none of them are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like you have to find the one that just works, and then just hopefully move yourself into it. But once you play past like the first couple levels, like I I, I start playing the first level myself. I think I got to like the third one, and then my brother came in and he was like, "Hey, what are you playing?" I'm like, "Oh, it's Gold Knight." And my nephew came in. My brother had played it with me originally, and so he was like all over it. And he we were there's like nostalgia back to the past. Mm-hmm. My nephew had never played it, and he's just like looking at us like. What you guys like this? And then he was all into it. He was like, "Oh yeah!" And we were all trading off, like going through the levels. We beat the game. And it was like awesome. It was a it was That's like cool. a blast from the past. I See, loved yeah. it. But yeah. these guys were playing multiplayer. Yeah, you know, which oh, is a whole okay. other beast. <laughs> so already you just being on N64, it was like <laughs> like pixelated to to hell. It was just like well, really murky. Forcing it onto like a 52 inch. Yeah, screen. yeah, yeah. Didn't help. Yeah. Didn't do but if you want to try and, I mean, like they did kind of come back uh what is it perfect dark is actually a pretty decent mm-hmm. multiplayer game like when that came out like, this is the thing that i love about those games like that they don't really have in a lot of newer games i, I love in perfect dark that it has multi it like 
each weapon has multiple uses. Mm -hmm. Like you can use your like laptop gun for a regular machine gun, but then you can like turn it into a sentry gun and throw it onto the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that was so cool because then it became like you created traps for people to come through, mm -hmm. and then strategy. you were then you were yeah you were able to like make the level into into certain things as you were going as you're playing. It's not mm -hmm. like time splitter where you're making levels, but it was like on the spot you're like figuring things out and making stuff. And the mm -hmm. AI was still pretty decent on that too like they had the dark sims and stuff on perfect dark for like bitches mm -hmm. to, to fight against sure. so like i don't know i, I love rare games up no, until, up until xbox 360 <laughs> like a, a lot of like game studios from back in the day aren't in business anymore have been bought and sold and changed names and logos and stuff so i can see why like like almost every studio has its heyday you know so i can see yeah, yeah. why that's yeah. money well spent what do you think Mine? Well, I want to say before oh. Mitch because I know that mine was going to be his, so I'm going to swap mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I know you're going to go on for hours. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to say that, developer, um, but I'm going to have to go with Nintendo for, yeah, I'm a big fanboy, but two is they consistently put out extremely, extremely polished games, mm -hmm. even to today. Mm -hmm. You never pull up a Nintendo game and have a bug and have something that stops you from moving forward. Like I don't know, there was that music fiasco on the Wii that what was it the like uh, where you try and like compose music and uh, never turn out. I was out never good. a music composing <laughs> game. The fact yeah. that you're not <laughs> <seeing that. laughs> if you're not talking like, like Mario Paint for Super NES, <laughs> I don't know what you're <laughs> There's like Mario's missing. Those yeah, yeah. were bad. But, no, no, but, but yeah. see, I mean there's a few bad ones like Mario Hotel for the CDI, yeah. right? But that was all third party. Before Nintendo was like, Ugh, nobody else knows how to do games well and pulled it back in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Nintendo has been consistent in, in what they do. Even like Mario Maker, mm -hmm. I love become. I, I'm huge on like level development, and whatnot. And I finally had a couple of people find and play my levels because I was bitching about that. Yeah. Because a billion people make levels for this game, and you put it out there, and you're like, yes, I just spent eight hours building something, <laughs> and nobody's ever gonna see it. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> buried to, under all the musical levels. Oh and my god. And you have to put levels. in this giant code if you want someone to actually look at your stuff. Like, yeah. It, it's just a, a mess. But I had a couple people play it and actually beat this level and I got like gold stars. You <laughs> played it. Yeah. Mitch was on it. Have I you? did the other one yesterday. Oh awesome. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. How'd you like it? Really good. good. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's like a, it's a very solid level. Um, there's nothing too special about it. There's nothing too like uh, difficult about it. It's yeah. just a good solid like you can imagine it in a Mario game. Well, do you have the like code for it? What's the name yeah, of it? Yeah, plug um, it. One of them's called Tryron, and the other one that was yesterday, I can't remember the name of it. But I Castle something. Yeah, Castle something. something. But yeah, I, I like to put little hidden secrets because that was my favorite part about Mario mm -hmm. games. And I don't have all the stuff yet. That's the other thing that pissed me off about that <laughs> is they give you like time release yeah. of the tools you can use to build the game. So okay. I want to have a tube that can transport you somewhere, and I have to wait another week or something to be able to build the level I want. Well, it's, so. you have to play it for five minutes every day. Mm -hmm. um, so so unless clock. you want to turn your clock, yeah. which takes an age, because I've done it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what you have to do to get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm um, about there. But, so, okay, yeah. so the levels have some hidden stuff in them. How about, um, are they like apparent when you hit the hidden things, you'll you'll know where they are? Oh, yeah. So it, how about we do like a challenge with the anyone online? You I'll, know, I'll make a new level for people online. I, I love like... If you're going through a Mario level and you see something just in the corner of your screen or you're jumping over a jump, you can see like a block just at the bottom of a hole. Something's obviously down there. So I like to hide things. Uh, one of them that you've already played, or actually, no, you haven't played. So one I was playing with the other day, it starts off and it's enclosed top and bottom. And the enclosure on top is all like uh, stone except for bricks over on the left-hand side, which is akin to a Super Mario 3 level where if you fly, you can break through the bricks and there's all this fun stuff up yeah. there. But I like to hide all these things because it's so cool. It's not hard, but when you discover things in a game, it's it's so like rewarding mm -hmm. finding cool stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I love building levels that mm -hmm. kind of teaches you how to do it. And my first one I did was um, the try run where you can literally run through the level in 20 seconds. Yeah. If you just keep, not like run straight, but if you run and jump and hit things at the right time, everything is lined up perfectly for you to just blast through this thing but if you don't do it at the right time like the level really sucks to try to get tough. through you know but i don't know it was a lot of fun but uh, aside from that um the stuff that i made nintendo is consistently like super polished in everything they do and yeah so, mm -hmm. yeah um that's why instead of what you're doing 
I'm gonna say. I, yeah. I, that's that's. Who no, I, I agree with you on Nintendo. Like, I rarely load up a game and it doesn't have any issues loading or yeah any crashes or bugs or anything. And it's a, it's surprising and refreshing. But I also find their their business model is a bit odd. Yeah. Yeah. Like games like i was like oh i'm really enjoying twilight princess i've never played it before um i might try skyward sword 60 dollars still and i'm like this has been years and years yeah. and i'm like Ugh. yeah so you know it, that kind of puts right. me off a little bit but yeah again it's kind of like just anything really is like it in, isn't skyward in, sword the ds game like no it's on the wii, wii but it, oh, it isn't the, wii. the 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 Wii, not the Wii U, you know. It's been it's been ages. It's you still know. sixty bucks, huh? Yeah, still and and the thing is like I guess you do pay for quality in a way, you know, like like almost anything, like technology, you sort of pay for you pay a premium for a good quality product, but sure. but it does kind of put people off sometimes. Well it's, you can borrow yeah, mine. Like, <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you. Yeah, you're, you're more than welcome. It's kind of like you may get a glitch with other games, but the price is still gonna go down after a year and a half. It's like is the experience you get with like a Nintendo game still worth sixty dollars? Yes, I like, think so. <laughs> I, see, that's I think the hard it's... thing is like all three of you are Nintendo fanboys. Right? Well, <laughs> the odd man it, it, it depends on what you want to buy into. If you if if you pick up a Mario game off the shelf, immediately you know it's a platformer. If it's a classic Mario Brothers, you know. Yeah. Um, you can kind of tell the first level is going to be green, and the second world is going to be fire, and the third world is going to be like Sahara Desert or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you already know the sort of pattern it's going to go take you through, and it just depends on the journey you want to take. Like if that's yeah. something you want to invest in and have fun, then go for it. Are those side scrollers yeah. sixty dollars? Yeah, some of them yeah. are. Still. Yeah. Holy crap. Even yeah. but the, the new Donkey Kong Country for the when the, I don't know they're on the second one now or like the Wii U the yeah. new Donkey. In fact, I have one of the new Donkey Kongs, and I haven't opened it yet for the Wii U. I think it's like Tropical Freeze or something. Uh, like I got that. the first one, and it's surprisingly tough too. Like, yeah. It's yeah. not just a simple like like oh, you Raymond. Can you can kind of just like blast through. It's sort of similar, but Donkey Kong Country you cannot. It, you have to be pretty like yeah, it's on cutesy, the ball to but get they it. they keep the mechanics fairly tight and tough. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's I love how <laughs> tight the mechanics and are. And that's what makes it playable. That's what makes it so sure. fun. That's what makes people want to come back and try it. Is that they're not pandering to like, oh, everyone's gonna want to play this. Like, well, everyone can play this to a certain extent, but then it does get to a point where you have to become better. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and you know, as much of a Nintendo fanboy I am, I do have like a ton of other consoles mm -hmm. outside of Nintendo. To like play. all of them. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> all the other consoles. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have to post a picture or something. Um, mm -hmm. But. And I have computer games. I have hundreds of computer games. Mm -hmm. And in fact, most of the time, that's what I play lately. You know, and, and I don't mind glitches in games. In fact, that's why I played Grand Theft Auto 4 so much is because yeah. they had glitches in the game, mm -hmm. which is like it's the funny. only reason you would go play the game anymore was the swing set in the park where you could launch your car a million <laughs> miles in, like, yep. across the city. Yeah. And that, I would play every weekend just to go launch my stupid car. <laughs> and I didn't have any missions or anything to do. But I, I love stuff like that. Um, and you I guess thank a glitch for what you were doing all Saturday night. That's yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I missed a movie with you guys playing Goldeneye, but I got a few million bucks from some guy on Grand Theft <laughs> <laughs> And he flew in his jet across town. And, no, I flew in his bus across town. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Dude, people followed him for like 40 minutes getting in a bus and he'd fly it across town and then get in some <laughs> other car and he'd transport somewhere. I was like, no. No actual journey. He was just doing things. It was, <laughs> it was fun. Does Rockstar dislike those types of cheaters who just kind of like play with the community and kind of like make a fun experience as much as they dislike the ones that are being dicks? You they, know, I, they did. Yeah. They used to put them in a, their own server. Oh, really? And their character would have a dunce cap on. Yeah. And it was it was like, you're a hacker, you, you cheat, whatever. You play with other cheaters. They used to do that. I don't think they've done that since, but they they do have servers. They'll throw you in, but they don't do a dunce hat. Um, I don't. I wouldn't think that they care as much the people that are just flying cars around and not being destructive to other players. Like the people that suck are the the guys that join a game and then everybody's just exploding as soon as you spawn, yeah. and then you can't do anything. So that yeah. sort of thing, I get why you'd want to just throw them into a whole server with other people that are exploding everyone else too, and mm -hmm. yeah. Because <laughs> it's no fun, so go enjoy yourselves, you know? Yeah. But the guys that are spawning cars for other people to play with and, and doing things like that, I mean, 
I, I wouldn't see why that would be a problem for them. Yeah. Well, I hope they, they have that differentiate, you know, between, like, the fun gaming hacks and yeah. the, you know, totally the game-ruining hacks, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just the biggest problem is it's the same hack, but it's all a matter how of you, how you use it. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I honestly think, like, Rockstar, like, deserves a mention at least because... Mm-hmm. So you're honorable. I mention think we should them? do yeah. honorable mentions at the very end. Okay, I've got All at right. least one for yeah. sure. I'll All come right. back to it. All but right. So yes, mine was Nintendo. Mitch, it was a Nintendo. Go on. mine. EA. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a heart attack. <laughs> oh <laughs> god. <laughs> um, I'm only joking, of course. It's, yes, please. Uh, for me, it's difficult because there are games that I really enjoy in a series, but they're either a one-off or they're like a. They're, they're an original one or a sequel or whatever so I couldn't necessarily say it's the whole developer so the, w- the way I looked at it was who is consistently good and the one that came to mind was Valve mm-hmm. um, almost anything they produce is just pure gold and I don't know what it is well I can give you a few points of, of why I might think it is but it just yeah I've never had a series of games where I've been so invested emotionally and mentally like and i think their characters are so well rounded and well written the cutscenes are really well animated even if it's just the high res stuff like yeah. they're, they're cartoony and funny and great um the stories are great like uh half-life 2 i think really was my first exposure i think like i i, th- I remember playing half-life as a kid but half-life 2 really was the first time i sort of was like man this company's awesome yeah you never play ricochet back in the day no, no, Rick, i Rick i remember it oh. i i remember even yeah. playing cs yeah like cs 1.6 mm-hmm. i think like that i used to go down to like a pc store <laughs> and they had like a land set up and you could pay yeah. for an hour or so and i used to sit in there and do it like for yeah. a couple of hours um but like the first time i actually sat down and, and deliberately dedicated time was was half life two and it was actually on the orange box i had Oh, okay. you know, oh right. 360. So I, I, I was able to be like, oh, man, this is this is freaking awesome. I really want to try Team Fortress. Oh, this is really cool. I wonder what this portal thing's about. Oh my god, this is the greatest game ever made. Like it's just like crazy. I just had this like overwhelming like just this bombardment of like really <laughs> high quality gaming. Um, I loved it every minute. I thought it was just great. You so, know. And see, I wanted you to start gushing about it because I. Uh, Valve would absolutely be like my number one. I yeah. spent so many freaking hours playing the original Half Life, mm-hmm. uh, Ricochet, and Counter Strike to the point we had our own Counter Strike server at the house. <laughs> and I mean, it was yeah, it was a freaking mess. And up until the point where um, Call of Duty Two came out, we played Counter Strike all week every week mm-hmm. and ch- we'd like challenge people for their team names steal people's servers and end up <laughs> playing like only knives like we yeah. played hours and i couldn't even yeah. tell you how yeah. many hours of my life have gone to those games but half-life was amazing and even though like low poly graphics it had a great story i mean it sucked you into that game yeah. so at the time if the graphics well. weren't oh awful, sure either. they weren't well, like, they were, yeah you, you were still pretty like when Half Life Two came out, it was like, "Whoa, this is still pretty. This is cool." Well, so way back in the day, me and my buddy Dan, and we still joke about it. It felt like a drug deal, right? So, <laughs> it's we're the biggest computer nerds ever, and and our, our computers weren't going to run uh, the next game, and it was Diablo Two for one, and then um, I, I believe it was Half Life Two was coming out, and so um, my uncle at the time was like building computers and selling whatever. So we call him up, I was like, I need a computer tonight. Right? Yeah. Like I need my fix. <laughs> and it's snowing and he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, whatever it takes, let's do it tonight. And so it's like 11 o'clock at night <laughs> and we meet him in this uh, store parking lot <laughs> underneath like the only lit up lamppost in this empty parking lot. <laughs> and, and there's no cars around and he pulls up in his truck. Did you have a hidden word? Like, like, no, like I, oh, I really wanted don't the to. daffodils look lovely at this time of year? And the guy's like, uh, Are you indubitably. And he's like, okay, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we pull up next to him and we have a wad of cash for these computers at the time. And he hands over and there are these like blank tan computer cases that anybody remembers back from like the late 90s. And so we swap these cases, give them the cash, and go off in opposite directions. <laughs> the cops thought you were a pedophile. Oh, I'm sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're opening up the child porn on here. What's this cocaine doing in here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
got home super pissed. <laughs> uh, I mean, we we were building computers just to play these games. I had yeah. a if anybody's a computer nerd out there, I had a, a Pentium two that was a slot processor, which means like it was plugged in like RAM plugs in, which is one of the at the time was amazing. Yeah. But I mean, now you could buy it. Of course, you could buy it. it's a Pentium two. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but like at the time, it was just incredible, and it was like a two thirty three megahertz, and my phone could you know yeah part one out but <laughs> it was just amazing to me at the time and plugging that in and going oh my god like the graphics on counter-strike are amazing i can go past <laughs> 640 by 480 yeah you know? <laughs> but yeah so yeah. I, I could go on but valve was such a huge mm -hmm. part of that time in my life and everything that they came out was valve counter-strike too yeah, yeah. It was are. originally a mod for Half Life, right? Yeah, it was originally yeah. a Half Life mod. I did play a lot of Counter Strike. Into. I did play a little bit of it. And well, the same so with was Team Ricochet was, uh, a, I believe, was a Half Life. Team Fortress. I tried no, to Team play Fortress that. was definitely Ricochet. Oh. was the first one. Oh, and then, oh man, you guys got to play. I played Counter Strike with you and your friends like twice, and I was like, no, <laughs> like, they don't like easy in. They're just like, no, no we're gonna just play. destroy you. Yeah, which was nice though because when Dan and uh, Sean would come mm -hmm. over to play Halo 2. I'd fucking rape him. With Halo <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd always get frustrated by the end of it and be like, let's go back and play Counter-Strike. And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> playing Halo. Uh, yeah. All right. I still think, like, just, again, just a little bit of a love letter to Valve. But, um, like, Left 4 Dead, I think, is one of the greatest co-op experiences oh, yeah. you can have. It's fun. Yeah. And uh, because it's just balanced. It's just everyone's pitching in and doing their own part and it's yeah. just mm -hmm. really like very tight mechanic and I one one like, guy in that game can just fucking ruin it yeah, <laughs> yeah. you get the witch at the wrong time and you're in oh trouble. it's yeah and it yeah it just goes south yeah right and i also think um like uh like half-life and portal especially like just puzzle shooter is such a great genre yeah. mm -hmm. like it has so much potential you know and, and so it hasn't really been like developed even now like even beyond yeah. that there's yeah. a few indie games which kills me tried but now the only thing i haven't that i've, I've kind of left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth is evolve yeah has anyone played evolve i played evolve a little bit um i played it in beta but then i never grabbed yeah, it so like, I. Know, so. and i think the thing that put me off was microtransactions yeah, yeah and i thought we oh, really got to stoop this low i thought we've you know this is like a gold standard here and now mm -hmm. yeah well i mean they started doing that with hats right in, oh that's true, that's true so yeah. they've been doing micro micro transactions for a while but um i don't remember if it was something that actually gave you an edge in evolve because in team fortress it doesn't really give you an it's edge just you're just silly and everybody yeah. loves it you know what yeah. I mean? yeah yeah all right let's uh quickly do some honorable mentions and we'll uh head on to some other things yeah so what are some honorable mentions real quick around the table We'll start with Mitch. Rockstar. Rockstar. Wait, we, you can do why. I mean, it doesn't yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Rockstar. Consistently, <laughs> consistently well written, very in depth story. Um, Red Dead Redemption is fantastic. Yes. Um, the GTA stories are always really good. The, the latest one, not so much, but especially things like 4 and San Andreas are really good. Uh, the Warriors is still probably one of the greatest video game movies ever. Yeah. Um, or video game movie tie in. Uh, yeah, just fantastic. Bullies is such a great game, you know. Bully, very good. yeah, yeah. Um, based purely on nostalgia, I'd just say Sega. Yeah, they haven't done much lately, Sega. but Sega. Uh, <laughs> early Sega. Early Sega. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'd agree. What Me? About you? Oh man, I, again, like I, I fall back to like the nostalgia. Like you guys are gonna roll your eyes, but Midway probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, I love to rock. I love like. Uh, there's, yeah. there's yeah, some. Yeah. There's, there's there's some. Awesome. Off, there's some. Awful Midway games. I saw, I saw Steve like, oh god, I cannot sit next to you anymore. No, but the look on my face was like, everybody that listens is gonna be like, this dude hasn't played a game. In a no, while. no, I, I don't want, I don't want to do it. But like, He's like, but like Goldeneye's awesome. Turok's <laughs> awesome. I know the controls in Goldeneye are so good. Hey, did you hear Perfect Dark Zero is coming out next year? <laughs> I'm so on excited. something called a 360. Yeah. They're doing a reboot of it. Midway's really found their stride. <laughs> no, I mean, but like, like. I wanted to choose something that was random and offside, but like they did have some good things going for them. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of bad, but yeah. <laughs> um, I would easily have to say Bioware. While like, yeah. Dragon Age Inquisition is probably like my favorite like single player game I've ever played, the Mass Effect trilogy 
is like the greatest like story that I've ever had in games. I, I've gotten I got choked up. I think we've already talked about it once mm-hmm. or yeah. twice. I've got I got <laughs> choked up multiple times in those games. Yeah. And then Dragon Age Inquisition was just like it's like the best parts of Dragon Age mixed with like Skyrim. And it's like I don't I don't really think there's been an RPG yet, like like a single single player that can contends with that. It it was just an awesome experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Irrational games. Bioshock is probably one of the best experiences yeah. in a video game ever. ever and Bioshock had. Infinite, man, was because I couldn't Infinite do the good. first two. Bioshock one. When you played Bioshock the first time, you didn't, you weren't like totally because I just didn't even know what to expect from it. And then yeah. when you play it, you're like, whoa, yeah. this yeah. is cool. I, didn't, I just didn't expect such shitty controls and shooting. I was uh, like, wow, this uh, well, yeah, bad. it's 2007. But yeah. like, again, it was more of the atmosphere. It was more of the story. I was, I felt like I was stumbling through this underwater city, and I was like, this is amazing. This is so cool. Twist every twist and turn. Yeah, the second yeah. one, not so much. It, it wasn't Irrational Games, I don't think. So. No, it wasn't. But, but um, Infinite, dude, I don't know how you can say it was all right. That game it's was all right. incredible, like, man. I, it kept building up, and I expected it to go places, and it didn't do that. Like, Elizabeth pulling stuff through tears, such a great gameplay mechanic. Why have we got to pull through boring old turrets? Or like a What Patriot. do you want her to pull through? Like a Neo? A, a jumbo <laughs> jet or a Zeppelin or something. Just the something. fuck is she going to do with a well, jumbo jet? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it'd be <laughs> awesome just to have this thing as, as cover, just come through and like just split the battlefield in two. Just so we're straight, you're on a floating city. If a jumbo jet comes through, but <laughs> she that goes, shit's going down. I know, dude. but she goes through various like <laughs> universes. She she appears in Paris and then she appears in New York or whatever, like all this kind of crazy stuff. Mm. Uh, parallel dimensions, uh, uh, like in, like literally infinitely like uh, like alternatives and solutions to puzzles. Yeah, and there was none of that. It was just sort of like. It's a turret from another infinite. It's a th- it's a thing from another Columbia, and it's just like, yeah. oh come on, let's be. I do agree. Game. They could have used that uh, for their puzzle mechanics. I You're saying they could have expanded on the universe. Sure. Rather it can than still be linear. Like you yeah. must pull this object through to get. Yeah. But let's be a little bit more creative than just an alternative Columbia. Like that's yeah. kind of boring. Like yeah, for know. sure. I'll agree to that. But I still think the story was the story's good. phenomenal. Man. The story's good. I don't like to play shooters, and I was like flying through that. Yeah, I I'm actually had a, a glitch where uh, where you can kill that old general or whatever, mm-hmm. or you can like let him live. Yeah, it would not autosave past that, so I had to beat from that point to the end of the game, like in oh. one sitting. <laughs> I was good at the game. I loved it. I was like, because because you know the story is like just so consistent through that point like mm-hmm. I and mean, i'm just like powering through like everything's super fresh in my mind so when when everything was like done i was like god damn and and andrea watched me and she was like in love with it she's like reading up theories about what's going on because of course we didn't get it but it's complicated mm-hmm. so. <laughs> no i agree like um, I, I i also feel like it has probably one of the best openings in a video game mm-hmm. along with bioshock did like, you yeah. hear that people wouldn't play it because they got baptized like they were like really that's against my religion it's like you dumb fuck that's not you <laughs> <laughs> like, this dude just that's got that. dunked in water well that's the other thing there was a lot of like religious undertones in it mm-hmm. and I know it's done like I don't know I, I don't like my religion and games to mix because I don't really I'm not a big fan of religion so yeah. I didn't really want like so I was like ah it's not it's not my favourite of the three yeah. let's put it that way it's funny I'm not I'm not a huge fan of religion for a lot of reasons either but i'm perfectly fine with seeing that stuff represented in games you know because yeah yeah i think especially it's a, like that it's like, a bold move yeah but because of that i think i would still hold bioshock one in a higher regard in yeah. terms of the storytelling you know all right i have a total twist to try and add on to this conversation <laughs> i'm gonna bring a new development to pixel wankers <laughs> develop right. our pixel wanking it's and we talked a little bit about it uh, with Mitch and Tim the other day. So I want to bring a game to the to this uh, to Look the how podcast. You are, dude. All right, it's making me nervous. How you how you, how you how you play this game? I don't have a name for it. Scott's cool game. Scott's but, cool game <laughs> with the pixel anchors. But how how it works is you name uh, two characters that are played by the same person, and you basically bicker back and forth. Who would win in a fight? Sort of like my dad's stronger than your dad type of thing. In, in, you know, in, Except uh, your dad's the same school. person in a different universe. So like <laughs> yeah. Michael Keaton and Christian so, Bale? Yeah, so, exa- so example, I'll, <laughs> g- I'll give this to uh, Tim and Steve maybe. Okay. So, okay, here's the first one. 
Han Solo versus uh, Indiana Jones. You're Han Solo. You're Indiana Jones. Why? Why would I win yeah. over Han Solo? Yeah. Oh man. Well, that's a problem because they're both adventurers. They both have a gun. Mm-hmm. Um, really, I think it'd be I think it'd be a draw. It'd be it'd be well, who would hit first? Well, because I'll give you I'll give you how it, how it goes. Okay, thanks. You've got a whip and I've got a Wookie. Fucking game over. <laughs> yeah, but that Wookie, he's, he's not in the fight. He's not in the fight, and the dude's never torn arms off as much as they like to say he has. Yeah, and think about it. It's a fight. So like, what what kind of fights are they in? Are is it a fist fight? Is it a gun fight? Like who wins in both in both those situations? Well, if we've learned anything from Futurama. Perfectly symmetrical fighting never solved anything, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what we're gonna run into. Yeah. I, I think I think it's Indy. Why he's, is that? He's so much more tougher than than uh, Han Solo. Han Solo is a scoundrel, and everyone loves him for being a scoundrel. But when it comes down to a fight, Indiana Jones he gets dirty. He he gets punched and beat up and and so many things. He gets tossed off cliffs and off tanks and stuff. <laughs> and and not... Han Solo runs down a hallway and shoots back at stormtroopers. Yeah, that's the point. He's not going to punch Indy. And Indy's kind of a <laughs> Indy's kind of a good guy. Like like don't get me wrong, like I like Indiana Jones, but it's like Han Solo is not going to think twice about shooting this dude. That's right. Like, <laughs> Han shot first. <laughs> so you so you're in agreement that it's, it's Han? I, I think, think, I think he would fight Han. dirtier than Indy, you which so? would probably yeah. give him Indy does have an honest conscience. Yeah. He's yeah. A, he's not a scoundrel. Yeah. Han's, Han doesn't. He's in the feather. All right. So what's what's <laughs> hey, another that's one? Our word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luke Skywalker and the Joker. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good match. Um, I would I would say Luke Sky, Skywalker and Cockknocker from James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the Joker. A good one. It's a three way fight. And the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> well, who wins? So Luke has has the Force. Sure. Cockknocker has <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> has, giant hand. Yeah, <laughs> giant hand. So he. He's out. <laughs> yeah. So Luke easily beats Cockknocker, and Joker's pretty worthless because he's laughing at Cockknocker. Luke Skywalker wins. <laughs> no, I think the Joker would win. I, I think the Joker would uh, be a hell of a lot more devious. Oh, yeah. Think, yeah. He'd have some sort of trap. Luke would fall. Luke is pretty clumsy as hell. Oh, like, my God. Yeah, he falls his way through those movies. So. <laughs> he's a dumb farm boy. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, and he proves it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so I, I definitely think the Joker would end up winning in the end. Yeah. Which would be such a sad ending, but I don't know. Be I'd be fun. good with it. Who, who would be uh, your two? Uh... I already did two. No, no, no. Who oh. are you choosing? He chose. Yeah. I chose Han Solo and Indiana Jones. Who are you so choosing? Who do you choose? Um, I don't know. Either two actors that played uh, like the same actor but played different characters, or something that's connected. Like for instance, so I I brought this up the other day. I, I played this game with my friends at home, and it was fun. But the spider from Lord of the Rings. Or the spider from the end of it, who wins? <laughs> she love, dude. Yeah, everyone's she yeah. I mean, but so so that's kind of the, the idea. Um, it's not so. Yeah, open. I don't know, dude. It's open. I'm the one who came up with Indian Han. Oh, did you? Yeah. You just said yeah. So that's a good one. <laughs> or no, no, no. Down? Who did I come up with? I came up with somebody else. Oh, I, yours, I yours was Joker. And, okay. And, uh, right. So we'll Tim. That. No, we, no, we can go with Christian Bale and. Uh, oh. Um, Michael Keaton. Keaton. So we're talking Batmans. Batmans. Batman. And uh, George Ooh. Clooney just sits in the corner and, and cries with his, with, his, with his back card. <laughs> 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 um, I, I say Christian Bale, honestly. Yeah. I, I I think he's a uh, more I'm a of Michael Keaton fan. Michael Keaton. He's in the. He's. What about Batman versus Birdman? <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Oh, he basically <laughs> plays like. The same. A, a very aging Batman. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think um, out of Batman, you know, Michael Keaton and uh, what's his name, Christian Bale. I think it has to be Christian Bale. Like, yeah, his stories get so much more crazy and more in depth. I think he could probably rock, you know, harder in his like cool bat tank versus Michael Keaton. Could t- oh, that his... thing goes right over the other Batmobile. Yeah, the other sure. Batmobile. It's yeah, like. It's like <laughs> It's like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen trying to go through the middle of Venice with their gigantic yeah, sub. Yeah. That's, that's how the old Batman was. <laughs> Please don't ever reference that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, um, Sean, Sean Connery, Connery. Uh, versus uh, 007. 007. <laughs> well, that was naughty. <laughs> I hate that. So who wins in that one? Uh, I just got to go with 007 because 007. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. He, he was pretty <laughs> badass in 007. And he was totally worthless in League of Extraordinary Yeah, Gentlemen. so much so that they had to bring him back after, uh, uh, what's his name? I don't know, Sean Connery was out for one movie, and they brought in another guy. Poor guy just did not do well. And they're like, oh, Sean, please come back. And he came back for the next movie. And then oh. they moved on. Yeah. So they have a... Yeah, one, Mitch? Yeah, Bruce Willis as John McClane mm-hmm. versus Bruce Willis from Pulp Fiction. That's wildly American of you. <laughs> John McClane, dude, that's easy. I mean, John well, McClane... Uh, he, I he's I a boxer in Pulp be. Fiction. He's a boxer. And, and he kills a guy with a katana. John McClane freaking... Uh, well, one of them, he drives his motorcycle up into a helicopter, blows <laughs> it up. Fucking, you can't beat that shit. Yippee ki It depends on the situation, I guess. Like, if it's just a fist fight, like, in a ring. Um, fist in a fight. ring? I mean, that's just... Well, just in a room, then. I, yeah. You know. yeah. All right, so what about two guys that look identical? Okay. not the same. So it's Ernest P. Wuerl <laughs> versus Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I think Rowe. Mike Rowe could totally beat the shit out of Ernest P. Wuerl because you see that guy? He's he's Even though he clumsily goes through that show, he's buff. And he does some shit. Yeah. Yeah, but Ernest P. Wuerl's got some machinery. Dude's got <laughs> some crazy inventions going on. Although, weird fact, Mike, Mike Rowe used to be like an opera singer, I think. Yeah, so, uh, so does Jackie that give Chan him any? Too. <laughs> does that give him any extra voice? Or... <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree. Mike Rowe would probably be all right. Ernest. What about all the recent Chris Pratt's? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jurassic World versus Parks and Rec versus Star Lord versus the Lego Movie. Star Lord. <laughs> I think Star Wars. Just a giant Lord Lego Lord has to Pratt. Like Star Lord. I mean, even like if you take their, their weapons away, it's like a cage match. Like Thunderdome style. Yeah, he's super scrappy, but. He's still scrappy and pretty much all the rest of those too. Mm-hmm. I, I can't take him seriously. Is, he's not going to have his raptors. And yeah, I think the, the, the real the real question is, <laughs> the real question is is he riding the raptor? Because if he's riding the raptor, Chris Pratt from uh, yeah, but is Jurassic it Chris World. Pratt as but it, Jason Statham? <laughs> and Jason Statham Statham's. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, if if he's riding his raptor, then Star Lord gets a spaceship. Uh, Star Wars, you can't uh, give him mounts, otherwise no, no, you gotta Star give him all just the have his little jetpack thing. Yeah, that's fair. But he then he still got his guns. He gets the little. P- I mean, if you're gonna give him their tools, ship. then they get their tools. Yeah, yeah. And then he's got his gun. And he's got his little mask. <laughs> I think I think Star Lord wins this battle. All right. All right. Tim Curry from <laughs> <laughs> Tim Curry as the butler from Clue, or Tim Curry as the butler from Home Alone Two. <laughs> Or Tim Curry is the devil from Legend. Well, well, if you Tim Curry is the devil from Legend. Well, no, if you're going to do the devil, you have to do Devil Tim Curry versus It Tim Curry. See, we're doing so Butler's Devil Tim Curry, no matter what. I think Devil Tim Curry versus Rocky Horror (laughs) Picture (laughs) Show. I mean, he's sort of a devil in that. The devil throws his hands up and doesn't care. (laughs) He just starts singing Time Warp and then like Legend Devil just crushes him. No, I think Legend Devil wins, and that's my factor, absolutely. But here's the question: Is Tom Cruise in Legend versus Mom. Tim Curry <laughs> from Come On and Conquer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Tom Cruise from Legend versus Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. Yeah, who wins? Mm, Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. Why is that? Because he's done some crazy shit, and like Tom Cruise from like Legend. That show shit for one is just weird, <laughs> and like I don't remember him doing anything super impressive. Like I mean, I know he does beat the devil, but. He beats Tim Curry, and Tim Curry beat Tim Curry, so... Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it with unicorn powers. That's and that's <laughs> we should open this up to listeners. Yeah, yeah. so I think uh, listeners, if they if you have a good, you know, battle, you know, list the, the two people that would battle, and um, we'll and why you think they, and who would win and why. Well, we should we should actually debate it. They, should, yeah. they could open it up for us, and then the next episode... Okay, send it in. We'll talk it. about it. Um, um, we have moved our podcasts um, over to Mixcloud. Yep. Um, so go check us out. We're still Pixel Wankers. We're just on mixcloud.com slash pixel wankers. Um, of course, we have Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, and keep an eye out. We're, we are building a website. We're in the middle of doing that. So Slowly. eventually when the website comes out, we'll want everyone to go to the website to support us through that. Way. Yep. In the meantime, Facebook is going strong. Yep. And uh, feel free to like us and follow us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Later. Next time. Blizzard wins.